Hi, my name is Adrian Valentine. Today I want to talk about The Little Prince or Le Petit Prince by Antoine de Saint-Exupéry. Alright, let's talk. In this very symbolic piece of French literature that comes to us in the form of a children's novella, Antoine de Saint-Exupéry elucidates the struggles of growing up and losing one's childhood. It is an interesting means of introducing children to what awaits them in the future and how to prepare effectively for such a life. This novel begins really simply with a pilot explaining how he gave up his dream of drawing at the young age of six because adults just couldn't understand what he was drawing. This pilot explains that adults always need an explanation to things and how that frustrated him. Unfortunately, the pilot submits to the adults and dedicates himself to the maths and sciences. During one of his aviation missions, the pilot crashes into a desert where he meets our beloved little prince. The little prince is an alien from a faraway asteroid. They form a friendship, and it starts in an odd way. The petit prince, the little prince, introduces himself by asking, S'il vous plaît, dessinez-moi un mouton, which in English translates to, please, draw me a lamb. Now we have this great juxtaposition between a pilot who has cast away his childhood and a little prince who is not involved in adultification. And through this, Antoine de Saint-Exupéry goes on to elucidate some of the absurdities of adult life. As the little prince goes on to reveal more about himself, we get to see these planets that have these stereotypical adults on them. We're introduced to a character who represents the cyclical nature of alcoholism, another who's a workaholic, and then there's an egotist and a humorist. All of these representations show how counterproductive they are when they're put to the extreme. And then there's the little prince's asteroid itself, his home. He's left behind a personified rose there, one that wasn't too pleasant to him, but he misses her. He had invested time into her, cared for her, nurtured her. She told him that she was unique in the whole universe, that there was nothing like her out there. But when he comes to Earth, he sees millions just like her in a field. But he comes to realize that the rose he left back home was unique solely because he invested time into her. This can be read in many ways. It depends on who you are, a relationship with a person, a job, an object, a passion, a hobby. A lot of the themes in this novella are up to the reader to interpret. Regardless, they're all powerful messages. What I personally loved a lot was the concept of the baobab. This is a root or a plant that threatens to destroy the entire planet if it's not tended to every morning. I read this as a representation of the requirement to be consistent in work. As with anything in life, if it's not tended to regularly, it can get out of hand, and it could be destructive. With the myriad of elements that can be read in so many different ways, this book is not really clear on the first read-through. A second or third is required, but trust me, you'll be eager to read it again after you're finished. If you're looking for something thought-provoking and it's going to affect you pretty emotionally and that's pretty short, this is the perfect novel for you. It is a children's novel, but it has a lot for adults. If you have children, this is a great bedtime story. There's a reason it was translated into over 250 languages. Overall, I give it a 5 out of 5. Alright, that's everything for me today. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. Please let me know what you think of this novel. Is the symbolism overdone? Am I reading too much into it? I also have a website, avvalentine.com. Please check it out for more book reviews, travel blogs, and short stories. Alright, good talk.